Welcome to the show. I'm your anchor, Taylor Hollanders, with my co-host, Anthony Franco. Hello. Welcome to the show. Recently, there's been some avalanches plaguing areas similar to ours. One of the worst avalanches was the one that happened in, in Peru on May 31st, 1970. The avalanche killed 20,000 people, burying the town of Yungay? Yungay? I don't know. But, so on today's show, we talk about awareness, avoidance, and safety tips. To help with the learning process, we have brought a special guest to our show, John McInnes. He studied avalanches for years and has won many awards because of it. He's very smart. Please welcome to the show. <laughs> Thank you. As you all know, I've studied avalanches for most of my life and know quite a lot about them. The reason that avalanches happen is because the atmosphere forms rain clouds and since the temperature is below freezing, it turns to snow which causes piles of snow. Once the snow shifts, they start avalanches. Mm. Wow, that was great. So tell me, what are some awesome things people can do to stay safe? So, some things we could do to keep safe are always travel with a partner, wear an avalanche rescue beacon that signals your location, carry a small shovel and a long probe to locate a buried partner if needed, learn how to use rescue equipment, practice with the rescue equipment, if caught in a slide, try to get off of the slab or grab a tree or something, if swift away, swim to the surface. Amazing! That's very informative stuff you have there, John. So tell me, there has to be some sort of secession process that goes along with an avalanche. Could you inform us on that process? Sure. So there isn't much in the way of succession process compared to, let's say, a volcano eruption. There's still a succession. It's always going to stay mostly on the second phase of the succession process, since it doesn't cause much damage to the environment around it. Hmm. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So basically, you're saying that the land an avalanche swept over mm -hmm. will be in a growing process after? Like, for example, if the grass is stripped from the land, will it start to grow back again? Hmm, precisely. Another example would be a tree stripped from the land growing back, or if plants growing back after they covered in snow. Don't forget, the succession process, as well as avalanches themselves, you could say affect mostly the geosphere. Hmm. So would you also say that an avalanche is a positive feedback loop or a negative feedback loop? Hmm. I also want to mention that an avalanche is a positive feedback loop because the snow builds up for an undetermined amount of time and has something happened to it that makes it fall, either wind, earthquake, whatever. It follows this process that will keep building up snow unless something happens. Well, thank you for your time. Sadly, that's the end of the show. I want to thank you your time again and nice hair man it's really it's really cool well i'm <laughs> i'm anthony franco <laughs> signing off